Alright, what's up amazing hackers? Hope you're all doing well today. Let's talk about your wasp cheat sheet for cross-site scripting because some of you guys might not think this is the best resource available, but best or not, it's a great resource. Let's agree on that, shall we? So, I've been told to talk slower. I will do my best. I cannot promise jack shit. So I swear in the 30, first 30 seconds of the video, there goes the monetization anyway, um, have fun. First thing I want to go over is this script with source equals and then XSS rocks. Now this XSS rocks domain is not always up, so I suggest that you look at something like xsshunter.com, they also have excellent payloads up there. You can even just use the URL that you're given. Or you can make your own something like that. Even you can host your own XSS Hunter instances. So all of those servers, out of band servers, those are gonna be useful for testing things like your basic script that is loaded from an external resource. CSP might still block it, so keep that in mind. You have your XSS locator in here. This is a polyglot what is a polyglot a polyglot will test cross head scripting in many different contexts now a context my friend is always different than uh, a filter so don't think this will bypass filters it's just not made for that let's look at the malformed a tags now as you can see we have a malformed a tag in a slash and we are not adding any href in this but we are adding a mouse over so in this case it might filter on that href attribute well if we do the mouse over or if we add that then we might still get the event handler to pop our javascript but in this case there is no click event in this a tag now you have the malformed image tags as well in here where they put the image and then it's like literally broken but the browser will try to translate this to cross-site scripting you also have the from character code in here and in this it will alert your cross-site scripting now you guys might not believe me so let's do a little bit of an experiment and let's go to my labs shall we so we have this lab right here which should be pretty secure i'm not saying 100 percent secure but it should be pretty secure so we have our labs we might do the reflected cross-site scripting labs first and we have a get for this is the real easy part this isn't supposed to block anything it's just outputting the text as we see it now not everything's gonna work because i am working on chrome as well some if it is going to include that script which i don't have access to and as you can see it will not find it because right now the script is down it appears to be so okay the first thing that it says is it's loaded over http while the script is loaded on https well maybe we can do some magic and try to force http in this case it still says something's wrong yep in this case it's still going to redirect us to the https site so we need to have an https site available but still then that XSS site it just doesn't exist yet 404 not found this polyglot here is going to just do in alert so we're going to copy this polyglot and in many different contexts this will work as you can see right here it works but also if I throw it in some other labs like the, the 20 labs these are different contexts so let's go over them add that in there yep we also get our pop-up now let's try the lab number 30 range that also has a different context in this case yep we also have you see your cross-site scripting so that is what a polyglot is good for it's going to try many different contexts but not really good at filter evasion just so you guys understand the difference malformed a tags we also have malformed a tags like this one right here let's see if this will work on our basic lab shall we so we go back we go to 01.php because that is going to be the least vulnerable and we go there we insert our link submit and we have our cookies being 
as you can see, we had them pop up. Now we also have this malformed A tag, which we're, ooh, there we go. Oh, of course, now it's going to get annoying all the time. Let's just do it like this. Do it like that and do it like this. Oh yeah, baby. There we go. Let's see if we can still get our alert to pop. Yep, we can. As you can see, your browser will try to correct that behavior. And we have our string from character code. If we look at the Unicode characters of that, that's going to be spelling cross-site script. But this is no longer possible because, as you can see, we can no longer use this JavaScript in the source directive. That's no longer possible. I still need to ask to remove that. Some other parts that are no longer valid are removed already. Now, in here, we can have some broken images with a empty source, for example, but the on mouse over event and it doesn't trigger in our case. So there might be something with the lab specifically that it doesn't trigger, or it might be something that it's not lab specific. There might be something in here that bothers it. So we can have a little bit of a look at that later on in the video. Let's try another one, shall we? Here we don't even have a source attribute. And as you can see, my website is not loaded in Chrome at this moment. It doesn't load that particular image. So as you see, some browsers this might work, some browsers this might not. You have your on error equals alert. Well, of course, this is going to work. We can just do anything random there. Uh, like X, like a slash, like a, a let's do, drink a bunch of random letters as long as the source doesn't exist. We also have the alert encoded. As you can see right here, we are using HTML entities. So if we do that, uh, there we go. Was it HTML entity encoding or what did you call that again? I think decimal references decimal HTML character references there we go we have them as you can see it is just our JavaScript encoding but without all of those zeros in front of it so as you can see we also get oh no in this case we do not so my lab is protected against that I'm guessing that's a good thing we also don't need that semicolon sometimes. Let's see if our lab is vulnerable. It seems like our lab does need that semicolon. Now we also have that hexadecimal notation, so we can try that. But in this case, it's also not going to work, I believe, because my labs aren't going to translate that properly, as you can see. And we also have the embedded tab. You have Java and then script, but this will not work because the directive, again, isn't going to work. So let's adapt this where it might work anyway. So source equals X, and then we just say on error equals alert. That should work if it's going to translate properly, which in my instance, it doesn't do. So I need to remember myself that I need to change this or at least request to change this and also request to change, where is it? So I will look at this later. Here we go. This should also be changed. All right, moving on to embedded encoded tab. So in this case, it's encoded. There we go. Nothing's going to happen in my case again. And if you're unsure if something is working or not, or should be working, feel free to go to the labs as well and just give it a shot. You can encode a new line, a null character. We can try all of those. So in this case, it's not going to work, but I don't expect it to either. So here is your garage return your null break, they're not going to work in this case. Then we have spaces and meta characters before the JavaScript and images for cross-site scripting. So you, this is also something that needs to be adapted because again, source equals JavaScript alert is not going to work anymore. Non-alpha, non-digit XSS, this is also a awesome possibility. So this is only gonna work in Firefox. A non-alpha non-digit is not a valid. Um, it's not a valid entry after your HTML keyword, and it is going to be considered a white space or non-valid token after that HTML tag. The problem is going to be that some filters are going to assume that the tags are going to look for broken white space, 
So based on that idea, we can bypass it by instead of white spaces and stuff like that, we can add these special characters. Now in my labs, this will not work. I haven't really found a real life application where this works yet. But if you guys have, let me know in the comments below, of course. And we have the extraneous open bracket, which is going to work in my lab, but it's not really required in this case. But that is going to be just adding two open brackets in case your filter is just looking for one. Now you also have your closing tag that is missing. It is replaced by your B tag in our case. Will this work? Well, not really. Do you know why? Let's have a look. So we have mixed content. That's not gonna work. Oh, no, that's not a problem. Yep, it is. There we go. Mixed content, but the resource again is not gonna be available. So useless to us. We have more that we can test for. No closing script tags we looked at. Protocol resolution in script tags. So this source thing here you can see that we're going to include it without a protocol which is in this case again not going to work because it's not even available i think that dot j isn't even the right thing there but this script source is going to be what we need there uh, um, then we have the half open html javascript xss attack vectors you can see the image source equals xss that's not going to work again because we do it in the image source which won't work and we have iframes which is also a possibility but without the closing bracket but instead just opening the bracket twice now i'm going to leave it here because i'm only like not even a quarter or wait through so i have a lot more that i can cover if you want me to cover more let me know and i might do another video on this thanks a lot everybody who always contributes to this cheat sheet thanks a lot everybody who seems to correct all of the things that i put out wrongly i really really appreciate that i can't thank you enough for that because i need to grow and right now i'm gonna grow in my bed i hope you appreciate it and i'll see you in the next one bye amazing hackers